Hello and welcome. My name is Anthony Verner and I'm so glad you could join us. Now, guys, I've had a bit of a tech issue with my camera today, so that's not working, but that's not going to hold us back. Before we get started, while everyone else is still coming into the webinar, guys, just share with me, if you would, in the chat where you're from. It's one of the things I love about what we do here is having a global audience, and it always intrigues me where people are coming from. Chantel from Melbourne, Rosebud, Manchester in the UK, Toowoomba, that's a nice place. Um, wow, it's moving really chats. Uh, the chat's moving really fast. Singapore, Claremont, Cyprus, Thailand, that's a great place. Uh, London, Brisbane, Romania, Taipei. Wow, from everywhere around the world. See how cool this is, right? It's, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but this is one of the things I really, really do love. Frank Ingham in Northern Queensland. Welcome. Spain, Netherlands, cold Melbourne. Mm -hmm. well, Wollumbar, that's a pretty area. Toronto in Canada, Canberra, London, upstate New York. Wow, this is great. Guys, thanks for sharing in the chat. One of the things I love is the chat. You know, it's it's the only way we get to communicate here and it works really well. So guys, at the end, there's plenty of opportunity for you to ask questions. But today we have a very special guest and my very good friend, Sean Allison, talking with Peter Zion about important topics like where the money is actually flowing in the market. So something that's super important. You need to know where that is. And then the cost of living crisis, inflation, that's a massive topic and everything else that's relevant to life right now. So let's get straight into it. Over to you, Sean. Thank you so much, Anthony. Very happy to be here and uh, really looking forward to this interview. Now, we're about to talk to a very intelligent mind on what is actually going on geopolitically. Very excited about this. I'm going to be talking to Peter Zihan. Now, Peter Zihan is a world-renowned geopolitical strategist. He uses his expert knowledge on demographics, economics, energy, politics, and technology to help people prepare for a very uncertain future. Peter is also a critically acclaimed author whose first two books, The Accidental Superpower and The Absent Superpower, have been recommended by former presidential candidate Mick Romney and Fox News political commentator Jesse Waters and Ian Bremmer. Peter believes we're about to witness the collapse of globalism, right? And this is something, this is very interesting. I'm very much looking forward to this. Now, Peter, what led you to this view on the fact we're about to enter into a de-globalization? And what will the world look like if that was to happen? There are two big things going on. The first is that geopolitics is reasserting itself with a vengeance as the post-Cold War system finally comes to an end. The Americans created the globalized network in order to bribe up an alliance to fight the Soviets, and uh, we've been losing interest in it ever since, with Biden being the most populous president we've ever elected, at least in economic terms. Uh, and without the networks that support global trade, you know, we don't have global trade. Now, for the Americans, this can be done. We're not a trading country outside of our NAFTA partners. But for everyone else who's built their system on international access to raw materials, energy, and finished goods market, it's, it's a bit of a kiss of death. Uh, the second big feature, feature is demographics. Uh, as the world globalized, we also industrialized and urbanized. And when you move off the farm and into town, you have fewer kids. You play that forward 75 years, and it's not that we're running out of children. In most of the world, that happened 30, 40 years ago. It's that, that now we're running out of working-aged adults. So we don't even have an economic model that theoretically can work with the environment that we're about to be in. Wow. So right now, there is a bit of a perfect storm going on as far as, like you're saying, uh, you know, people are becoming older. We've got less people supporting people that are not working. Uh, you know, Interest rates have gone through the roof. Inflation has gone through the roof. And a lot of experts and economists are predicting a very large crash in global financial markets. Uh, they're talking about a bigger crash than the 2000 tech crash, the 2008 GFC, and even the 35% fall we saw in 2020. Uh, do you believe that we are headed for a huge financial crisis or crash bigger than we've ever seen before? There's a million things that go into answering that, so I'm not sure I have a conclusive answer. I can tell you that as the world has aged demographically, capital has been available at greater volumes with greater ease at lower rates in any time in human history. And that pretty much defines the last 15, 20 years. 
And now the people who generated all that capital, the baby boomers, as they were moving towards retirement, are moving into retirement. And so the capital costs were always going to skyrocket about right now and continue rising at least into the mid-2030s. So we have 15, 20 years of incredibly cheap capital that we now have to process through. And if you look at just the raw data, uh, the United States is probably okay. We seem to have at least learned most of the lesson from the 2008 financial crisis, but Australia hasn't. Australian credit has risen by a factor of seven since the year 2000. In the case of India, you're talking about 14. In the case of China, you're talking 34. So the idea that we can kind of let the air out of some of these financial bubbles without them popping is probably a bit of a stretch, but the story is absolutely not going to be the same everywhere. Okay, very interesting. Now, Donald Trump. Now, 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 these questions are coming from our members, right? These are the burning questions that our members have been asking us. So this is why we're now asking you. The uh, third Donald one's Trump. the Trump question. All right, let's get yeah. to it. This is the big one. A very controversial character, no doubt about it. Very uh, very split on a lot of people's views on him. But he's, he's recently uh, spoken about the fact that global warming is not the real threat. It's really nuclear war. He believes that we're on the brink of World War Three, and that nuclear war is probably the, the thing we should be more concerned about as opposed to global warming. What's your views on that, on, on his comments? Uh, whenever Trump says something sensationalist but gives no context or details, it's really hard to do anything except for guess. And whenever we guess, since he literally made it up on the cuff, we generally end up with nothing uh, that can be churned out. Uh, his exact words were nuclear warming not nuclear war. Right. So <laughs> um, he is running for president again. And if his pattern from the last time he ran for president holds true, he's going to say a lot of things that he will then drop within hours and say something that directly contradicts it to the next audience. And if past his prologue, his fans don't care. Fair enough. Uh, now, right now, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. People are fearful about where we're heading. For you right now, as an expert in this field, uh, someone who does uh, you know, talk to governments and uh, large firms around the world and consult with them, what's something right now in the world that scares you the most? Uh, it's two things that come from the same series of events with the Ukraine war. So politically... Even if the Ukrainians succeed with this spring offensive in ejecting the Russians from all of their territory, that doesn't stop the war. From the Russian point of view, the war will not end until such time as they have an external crustal defense again, and that's not in Ukraine. That's in Poland and Romania. So for the Russians, Ukraine was always nothing more than the first step, and there's another wave once they're done with Ukraine. But the reverse is true too. Because the Ukrainians know that the Russians will never stop, the Ukrainians, if they're successful, will have to go into Russia and defang its logistic capability so it can't invade. So one way or another, the Russians are either moving into Poland or the Ukrainians are moving to Russia proper. And so we're only at the very beginning of what is going to continue to be a nuclear flashpoint for quite some time. That's piece one. Uh, piece two, without foreign tech and especially foreign workers in the Russian system, their demographic and economic collapse over the last 30 years means that they're having problems maintaining the basic infrastructure that produces a lot of the commodities that the world depends upon. Now, we've all heard the stories of oil, natural gas, and wheat, and I don't mean to suggest none of those are important. They're all important. But the one I'm most concerned about is the variety of fertilizers that the Russian space produces for export. Because Russia plus Belarus collectively, they are the world's top supplier of fertilizer as a group. And without them, we cannot support a planet with 8 billion people. Yeah, that's certainly something uh, that a lot of people are not thinking about. Now, right now, we're experiencing uh, you know, incredible amounts of pressure on people with the cost of living. Inflation has risen dramatically. They tell us the CPI number that officially comes out. I call it the CP line. It's a very heavily manipulated, very heavily manipulated number. In fact, they changed the way that they measure inflation just at the beginning of 2023 with the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics to suit their own agenda. Of course, there's lots of reasons why they want to keep the CPI lower than what it actually is. But right now, we're seeing 
uh, cost of living hurting a lot of people. Uh, I know in Australia we've increased interest rates 11 times in a row. In the United States, 10 times in a row. Certainly, people are starting to feel the pinch from that. And we're starting to see cracks in the system. Having you know increased interest rates that dramatically, that quickly, that puts a lot of pressure on the system. And eventually, you see cracks. And we're seeing cracks in the banking system with uh, you know quite a few banks already collapsing. And of the 4,800 US banks that there are, around 2,315 of them, according to the Hoover Institute, are insolvent. Uh, that's obviously a bit of a problem. And for you, from your point of view, uh, do you see this getting much worse? And what can people do to protect themselves from the banking collapse that could could uh, you know escalate from here and out of control inflation? Well, I would start by saying that the United States banking sector tends to be among the more healthy ones in the world. And if half of our banks really are insolvent, we're all screwed and it doesn't matter what you do. I happen to not believe that report at all. The idea that there's a lot of stress in the banking sector, that's obviously true. Uh, but let me dial this back a little bit and put a couple of things into context. Think about what tech is. Think about what Silicon Valley is. The whole idea is you put a bunch of 20 and 30 somethings into a network if they're not physically in contact with one another and you pay them to think up things that don't exist. And then you pay them more to figure out how to make those things exist. And then you pay them more to prototype those technologies and even more to operationalize them. And only then do you start building them out throughout society. You don't get money back from any of that. That is all done on credit. And so you have to have a financial system that is deep, that is liquid, and finance has to be easy to come by and above all cheap. And that is exactly the environment we have been in the United States since roughly 1995, largely because the baby boomers have been nearing retirement, but haven't reached retirement yet. What changed last year is we hit majority retirement for the baby boomers. And we've always known that this was coming. We've always known that that money was going away. And now most of it has. And so as a result, we've seen the steepest increase in capital costs in the history of my country. And lo and behold, Silicon Valley got hammered. We won't see the same pace of technological advancement again until such time as we have cheap capital again. That will not happen until we have a new mature worker generation that has not yet retired. That will be the millennials in the 2030s and 40s. We've had four banks in the United States go bust. Every single one of them was affiliated with the tech sector. That's to be expected. The fact that only four went bust is actually kind of a surprise to me. And if you look at the wider economy, the sharpest increase in capital costs we've ever had, not one went bust. Is everyone under stress? Sure, you can't change capital costs that suddenly without stress. But as uh, Donald Rumsfeld used to say, that's a known known. This is what the Federal Reserve was built to deal with, and it has tools for this. Does that mean other banks aren't going to go? Not what I'm saying. I'm saying at this point in the cycle, or super cycle, which is probably a more appropriate term here, the damage really is held to just a couple of sectors, with tech at the top of the list, real estate's probably second. So far, purchasing power is holding up. Consumer activity is holding up. Property prices are mostly holding up. I don't want to say a recession is impossible in my country, but so far, things look okay. Interesting. Very different perspective than what you see uh, in the fear-based media, that's for sure. Now, <laughs> now in, in your opinion, uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, they have when you look at the official numbers, being able to bring inflation down somewhat without causing a huge amount of collateral damage. Uh, do you think that they're doing a good job and can they really bring down uh, inflation by simply destroying demand and, and keeping interest rates elevated? Well, let me start by saying I never want the Federal Reserve's job, so I'm not going to be one of those armchair pundits who questions their every motion because I don't think I could do better. Uh, I will say that most of the reduction in inflation that we have seen to this point is probably not actually due to the Fed. It's because we're now quite a ways past COVID. 
Uh, remember that from roughly 2020 until mid-2021, we were having significant whiplashes in demand globally. Every time we got a new variant, every time we got a new vaccine policy, every time something changed, what we consumed, the patterns shifted. And it took about 18 months with each shift for industry to change the manufacturing supply chains to catch up. Well, in the United States, Texas, Arizona, and Florida, they had opened up mid-year. And then a few months later, everyone but California followed suit. And then California, I'm sorry, and then California followed in February of 2022. So yes, those are the dates. Well, we're 18 months past that. So the supply chains have caught up. And so the supply-driven inflation has gone down. That's probably responsible for half of the shift in inflation. The half that hasn't gone away, that's ultimately rooted in labor. Because remember, the baby boomers, the largest generation we've ever had, the largest worker class we've ever had, is now half retired. So the Federal Reserve is using the tool that it has for the problem it understands. But there's a big lag because the sort of demand that is being crunched here is not what has actually driven inflation to this point. If we're going to solve the inflation problem in the long run, we have to fix the supply system. That means training up workers to be more productive. That means a degree of automation, but we have to do that in an environment with more expensive capital, not just because of the Fed, but because of what's going on with the baby boomer retirement. And that's before you consider in disruptions that might happen in places like Germany because of the war or China because of its demographic collapse. So we've got a lot of headwinds coming that hit the core of what supplies us with goods. And the only way to get around that is produce more goods elsewhere, and that means building more industrial plant, and that is also inflationary. So we should get used to significantly higher inflation for the next several years than we have had in the Western world for the last 40. And it's going to last at least six years, maybe as many as eight, and that assumes we get started pretty soon. Wow. So inflation is going to be sticky for quite some time yet. Mm. Now, this is a very interesting question. Uh, what do you think the biggest lie is that people have been told by the government? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter who's president. The government is always going to do a degree of spin to help people or for, to try to get people to not panic. I think to the degree that the governments of the world understand the problem is in some question in my mind. But the biggest concern that I have is we are radically unprepared for China exiting the manufacturing business. Uh, demographically speaking, their labor costs have gone up now by a factor of 16 since 2020. They're no longer the low cost producer of anything. And the demographic situation is now so atrocious that they're literally running out of people aged 40 to be in the factories in the first place. And that's before you consider perhaps an energy shock because of the Ukraine war or trade shock because of tensions with the United States. Uh, we're going to lose them. And we are not ready for that. Wow. That's something not a lot of people talk about. That is, uh, that's something we'll talk about a little bit more in just a moment. Now, a lot of people are talking about central bank digital currencies. A lot of people are very worried about this. They believe that it could lead to the replacement of the US dollar, it could be the beginning of total government control and surveillance, uh, pro, uh, programmable money, all these type of things that people are talking about right now. Do you agree with that? What's your view on central bank digital currencies? Well, central bank digital currencies mean something different to everyone. And in the uh, most extreme uh, version, which is what the Chinese are trying to implement, but some version of what you just outlined actually is the express government goal, the ability to monitor in real time every transaction everywhere. But keep in mind the very big difference between the American system and the Chinese system. The American Federal Reserve is just a few hundred people and they have no interest in monitoring transactions, and they have no capacity without at least a hundredfold expansion in their staff. China has 1.3 billion people, and government control of everyone's daily life is the first and foremost goal of the Chinese Communist Party. So for one of these governments, a digital currency is expressly designed to do exactly what you've said. And in the other case, with the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve isn't even sure it wants one. Uh, the Federal Reserve is poking at it, but it doesn't at the moment see a very strong use case for an independent digital currency. 
Now, if you talk about a digital currency as what the Fed is actually doing, which is just basically making all transactions that want to be digital, digital, and you use paper to cash as quickly, as uh, rarely as possible, and everything is cleared on your phone, then yes, the Federal Reserve is going that direction. But the United Kingdom is already there because the United Kingdom basically got rid of paper checks. So there's a natural evolution here in the financial system that the Fed is embracing. But what most people talk about when they're talking about CDBs uh, is, is really not what the Western world is even exploring, much less has an interest in. Now, this is a very interesting question here regarding government spending and I suppose money flow and where the opportunities are moving forward. Uh, with government spending, it's almost mandating that some sectors will boom and others will crash. Uh, which sectors do you believe are about to grow and which, which are some of the sectors that could possibly crash and you want to avoid? This, this is weird. So I'm not a big fan of the Biden administration's economic policies writ large, but this is one where I think at least they've got the spirit right, even if they've got some of the details wrong. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, which is a dumb name for what it actually does, uh, seeks to build out processing capacity for a lot of the technologies and especially a lot of the base materials that are required in order to do the green transition. Now, I'm a green, but I'm a green that tends to get um, uninvited to parties because I can actually do math. And I call people when they're saying bullshit. In the case of what's going on with the Biden administration, though, we are the sunniest first world country after Australia, and we are the windiest first world country. So there is a lot of room in the United States in an economically viable manner to expand our green tech footprint and splice it in with everything else we do. Now, there's a thousand caveats in that statement about the where's and the when's and the how's and the how fasts. But I think that's a good starting point. The weak point in the American green tech industry is we produce almost none of the base materials and even less of the processed materials. So once the lithium is basically mined and concentrated, it then needs to be turned into, that met into lithium metal. That processing step from the powder to the metal, none of that's done here. Very little of the copper harnesses are done. Almost no of the nickel processing is on here and on and on and on and on. And if I'm right about China, we're going to lose the location that does most of the processing. And guess what the country is in the world that does the second most processing? Russia. So the idea that there's a few hundred billion dollars floating around in the American system to chase after industry to do this at scale in North America, I think is a grand idea. Once you get out of the weeds, you will find things you don't like. But overall, remember, this is the first industrial policy the United States has had since the 1940s. The advantage we have under the American president right now is that he was a full grown ass man in the 1940s. He remembers how that went. He's the only person alive right now who does. And so it makes sense that he's the first person to come up with an industrial policy since then. This is what I really want to talk about here. In your latest book, you wrote that China is in terminal decline uh, and will never recover. Now, a lot of people think of China as the next superpower, the second largest economy in the world. Uh, billions of people, they're going to be a, uh, they're long term thinkers. That's how a lot of people view China. But uh, what's led you to that view about uh, China in terminal decline? Well, let me give you four. Uh, the first one, and by far the most significant, is the demographic collapse. Uh, as countries industrialize, they move into the cities and birth rate drops. And the same time that happened in China, starting in the late 1970s, the Chinese also instituted the one-child policy. So you had economic trends crashing the birth rate at the same time as the government forced it down even further. And now in major cities across China, the birth number of births per women is below 0.8, which is a historical low for any country in any era. And we're looking at a complete loss of the working class in China in under a decade. And there's not an economic model that works with that at all. So that's number one. There's, there's no negotiating on that one. You can't fix that. Second big problem is that Chairman Xi has executed or exiled or imprisoned everyone within the PRC who's capable of independent thought, and no one wants to bring him information anymore. So if you were going to attempt to have a more dynamic system that thinks forward, thinks ahead, they don't have that anymore. They may have had it at one point, we can debate that, but it's gone now. And you basically have one guy making policy in a box and everyone afraid to tell him anything because they don't want to be the next messenger that's shot. 
that's not a great thing to do when your country is facing critical problems. Uh, number three, the financial sector. When the United States got into trouble in 2008 with subprime, we had doubled total private credit in eight years. That was too much too fast. China has increased their credit by a factor of 34 in 20 years. There is no country in history that has gone up this far this fast ever and survived doing one third of that volume. So you want to talk about a financial crisis, it will be centered in the People's Republic and the economic sector that is most exposed in China is agriculture. So not only do you have an industrial bust to go with the financial bust, you might even have famine. And that brings us to the fourth thing. China imports three quarters of their energy. Three quarters of that comes from the Persian Gulf or further beyond. And they import over three quarters of the inputs that are required for them to grow their own food. They are the country most dependent upon international trade simply to exist. And whether it's the Ukraine war or spat in the Persian Gulf or the Americans going on the war path or simply internal political incompetence, which is now rising every day, this doesn't work, not in a non-globalized system. So China is going to flame out just as impressively, impressively as it flamed on. And we're all going to remember it for a good long time. Wow, that's a revelation. Very different than what most people think and certainly what, what we're being told. Now, uh, switching here over to oil, uh, what's your prediction on the price of oil uh, going forward? Oh my God, I wish I had a good one for you. What I can tell you is that uh, most Russian crude, about 70%, is produced in the permafrost. And because the Russian demographic ha is terminal and because the Russian educational system collapsed 30 years ago, there's only a very small cadre of skilled workers that are actually trained up to do the work in the permafrost. Uh, and they're on average in their late 50s now. So there's not a lot of them. They're literally dying out. And without Western tech and above all else, West Western workers, the ability of the Russians to keep this stuff flowing is is very much called into question. And that's before you consider war sanctions or boycotts, all of which are having their own impact. So we need to plan for a not too distant future when Russian crude exports just aren't there. Now in that scenario, especially if it happens suddenly, we're going to have a significant price shock around the world. And then you have to look to Washington because in Washington, the American president has the authority to end oil exports with a stroke of a pen. It doesn't have to go to Congress. That, that authority was already granted back in 2015. And since Biden is the most economically populist president we've ever had, there is no way he is going to expose the American consumer, the American voter, to high and volatile global prices if he doesn't have to. So the question just isn't when will the Russian stuff go offline? It's how much American stuff goes on offline with it. And if the world loses American and Russian crude at the same time, you're probably looking at crude prices never dropping below 150 again. And you're probably looking at a captured price in North America where they never rise above 70 again. Probably. There's a lot of ifs and statements uh. leaked to that prediction. Yeah. Very interesting. Now, uh, you believe that some big companies are in serious trouble. Uh, which ones are you referring to there and why? Well, you know, any sector you're going to be able to find companies that are in problems. Uh, the one I am by far the most concerned about on a global basis is America's Apple. Uh, starting with the, what's going on in the tech sector, the pace of technological advance is going to slow considerably. And if Apple can no longer release a new version every six months, that's obviously going to hit their bigger, their bottom line. But more importantly, roughly 90% of the supply chain steps that go into the average iPhone touch the People's Republic of China in some way. Now, a lot of that is going to be more on the low value add and assembly, but that's not nothing either. And without the Chinese as part of the supply system, it's going to take Apple at least five years to rebuild that supply chain capacity in other parts of the world. Now, most companies, I would say that would be the kiss of death, but this is Apple and they've got a giant cash cow and they've got a giant war chest, so they can afford to do that, but it's going to take them a lot of time. Wow, Apple, that's very interesting. Now, we've witnessed huge technical, uh, technological advances in the past few years. You know, we've got robotics, artificial intelligence in particular, uh, virtual reality, electric vehicles, 
are they worth the hype? Is this going to be an explosion uh, moving forward? What's your views on that? Well, again, green that can do math. And as a rule, I would say most EVs don't make it. Um, if you believe Tesla, uh, you can break even on your carbon debt in a matter of a couple of years and maybe even economically a few after that. The problem is that Tesla data assumes that your that your electric vehicle was fabricated with 100% green energy and is fueled by 100% green energy. And that is just not the case. Most of the processing and most of the middle steps in manufacturing are powered by soft brown coal in China. And then even in California, only half of the grid is green. And then of course, and this might be a shock to some people, uh, people are relying more on solar than wind in most places. But there has never been a day where the wind shines at night, which is when most people are going to be recharging their cars. So even if you've got a reasonably clean grid, you're still probably charging your car with fossil fuel energy. So that story probably isn't there yet. The technology may evolve. And if the technology evolves, I reserve the right to change my mind. But today, no. In addition, if we're serious about doing this with the technology we have today, then the build out needs a lot more power plants for solar and wind, a lot more transmission, a huge number of battery systems to replace all those peaker plants, in addition to electrifying transport. That means we need three times as much copper, 10 times as much nickel, 18 times as much graphite, 12 times as much lithium, and on and on and on. And we need it all by 2030. There has never been a decade in human history where we've been using an industrial material and we've doubled its availability in a 10 year period. And now we have to do that and more for 11 different materials. No, can not do it. So what's going to happen this decade is there's going to be a bit of a come to Jesus moment within the green community when they realize that the dreams cannot match the realities. And that means one of two things will have to happen. Number one, the dream will have to change to something that's more realistic. Or the one country with the military capacity to do it goes out and secures the sources of these materials for themselves. Because while the world couldn't do the green transition with today's tech, the United States might be able to. But that means taking all of those things off the global market. Wow. Now, right now, uh, what would you recommend that people put their money into as far as assets that are going to be doing well going forward? Where, where do you think? the average person should be focused? Well, I'm not a financial guy, so take that for what it is, or take what I'm about to say for what it is. Uh, we're going through quite a churn right now as the baby boomers are removed from the system. We've had an environment of extraordinarily cheap capital that has lasted an extraordinarily long time, and there's just going to be a lot of shakeout. There's no way around that. We're all going to have to get used to a new operating environment. But if you fast forward just two or three years when the vast majority of that money is gone, anyone who still has capital to deploy in that environment will discover that there's not a lot of competition in capital holders because the next generation Gen X is so much smaller. So you should expect the rate of returns three years from now to be significantly better on average than anything we've seen in the last 20 years, which means that financial planners will actually have to do their job and have to look for things that are companies that bring value and that aren't just being manipulated by cheap capital. For the investor, this is about to get a lot easier. For the investment professional, it's about to get a lot more competitive. Peter, as far as a lot of doom and gloom in the world right now, a lot of people are feeling a little bit hopeless right now with the uh, cost of living being so high and interest rate rises and it seems a lot, a lot of doom and gloom out there. For you personally, how do you stay positive? What are some of the things that you focus on to, to help you throughout this crazy world that we find ourselves? Well, it's kind of funny because sometimes people pervade or People have labeled me as the America's greatest purveyor of doom porn. Uh, so it, it's difficult to remain too cheery, but a couple of things. Um, number one, we are going through a period of extreme change. And yes, that means a lot of dislocation and destruction. But this isn't the end of the human condition. This isn't the end of America or Australia, maybe the end of China. Uh, and so we know we will get through this. Our systems are stable. Our demographics are pretty good. 
our finances are about as good as you can get. Uh, we will get through this. And in the case of the United States, if we're really losing access to materials processing and manufacturing, excuse me, out of both China and Germany at more or less the same time, that means here in North America, we need to double the size of the industrial plant. And yes, that means inflation will be high for a good long time, but it's also going to be the greatest growth story in the history of my country and Mexico and Canada. And on the back side of this, we will have built a supply chain system that uses less workers, is more capital efficient, is more energy efficient, that employs locals to serve local markets, that's cleaner, that's more responsible, and it'll be largely resistant to international shocks. This is a good story. We just have to get from here to there. Where do you see Australia in the future? Is it one of those countries that um, I think in previous financial crises like 2008 in particular, um, and even in 2020 somewhat, we, we were pretty resilient. How do you feel about Australia going forward? I, I know you talked about uh, debt levels and credit card levels. Is there some pain coming up with sticky inflation and uh, high interest rates for Australians? Let's put the financial question to the side for just a moment. We'll come back to it. Let's talk about everything else. Everything else looks pretty good. Yes, you have gone hook, line, and sinker supplying commodities to a price-insensitive Chinese market. And yes, as China breaks down, you're going to feel that. That's unavoidable. But you have far better relations with the nations of Southeast Asia, which collectively are going to pick up a lot of the pieces that the Chinese are going to drop as their industry collapses. They're not as price-insensitive. It'll be slower growth but it'll be more sustainable and more healthy moving forward. That is also a good story. I would also say there's an opportunity here for Australia to do something that it has shunned doing until now, and that's moving up the value added scale yourself. A lot of those materials processing that the Americans are so paranoid about, guess who's got the raw materials? Guess who has some of the cheapest energy in the world? There's no reason that Australia can't play a role in upgrading the lithium and everything else that the modern world is going to need. And you also have the skill sets to do it. And you can even do it in green power in a way that we can't do it in the United States because your solar potential is so huge. So there are a number of things that suggest to me that we are looking at another couple of solid decades of growth for Australia. If you can get past that financial crisis, You've got to chew through something that's roughly three times as bad as what the Americans went through with subprime. And there is no way I can imagine that you're going to do that without a recession. Thank you so much, Peter. Really enjoyed that. Very insightful. Some incredible points of view there. And thank you so much for your time. Uh, absolute pleasure to have you on. Not a problem. Now, I know what you're probably thinking after listening to this interview is... What do I do now? What's the best way forward for me? What can I do to protect myself from what lies ahead? And how can I become financially resilient, generate cash flow, regardless of what's happening in the world, regardless of whether there's wars, pandemics, market crashes, economic downturns, and everything in between? Well, my very special expert guest today is Anthony Verner. Now, Anthony is about to teach you a way so that you can start extracting gains weekly, monthly, and sometimes even daily from the stock market, regardless of whether the market goes up, down, or sideways. So I need your full attention just for the next 30 minutes as Anthony will demonstrate live how to make consistent gains weekly when the market goes up, down, or sideways. Anthony, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sean. And what an incredible interview with Peter Zion. That man has a head full of knowledge and brilliant to listen to. Some very insightful thoughts and um, thank you for sharing. Well, hello and uh, welcome everyone to the Meta Wealth Professional Training. My name's Anthony Verner and I'm really glad that you can be here today because we're going to take over from where Peter was talking about different things in the world that are going on and, and the extreme change that is coming for us. So what we want to do is look at ways that we can work within that and not be scared of it. 
Right? There's no point being scared and fearful and doing nothing. We need to just start moving forward. So what I'm going to show you is a detailed way to generate income in a very simple way. So grab a pen and some paper and let's get into it. So simple and easy to follow rules that you can start using right now to make daily, weekly and monthly income. And it's very powerful and something we've actually been doing for more than two decades. Even if you're a complete beginner and have never had any experience in doing anything like this, you'll be, uh, I'll be able to show you and you'll be able to do this exactly the way that we do and start making money rapidly. So I want to show you the right way to do it. I want to teach you the keys to success, the rules to success. Once you know what they are, it's very simple to follow. It can be done as an automated process. So once you understand how it works, then you'll be able to make this automated so it becomes set and forget. Okay, you'll be able to have this generating income for you without you needing to be there. Phenomenal amounts of money can be made here, more than you can possibly realize right now. So listen carefully because this can become a game changer for you. There was a gentleman by the name of Richard Dennis. He was very successful at trading. In fact, someone that made hundreds of millions of dollars, very successful over many decades. He was having a discussion with one of his colleagues and the argument was that he believed that he could take anyone, even a complete beginner, anyone at all, and teach them how to make massive amounts of money from the market. In other words, become a professional trader. His colleague said, no, Richard, you've got a special skill. You're different, and that's why you can do it. He said, no, no, I can teach anyone how this works, even a complete beginner. So what he did to prove his point is to place an advertisement in the local newspaper. He wanted to find complete beginners and he said, I'm going to prove to you that I can do this. So he placed the ad in the paper, like he said, and had hundreds of people express interest. He chose 14 of those people. Now, they had to be complete beginners, no experience at all, never even worked in the industry, nothing like that at all, just complete beginners. He got these 14 people and he started with four keys. And we're about to share those with you now and two very simple rules that I'll give you as well. Those 14 brand new traders with zero experience generated $175 million between them. Four or five of them actually went on to become professional fund managers, managing other people's money as well as their own. Now, that's an amazing story, right? Following four keys, no experience, following two rules, and I'm going to do the same thing for you right now. This is actually the ad that he placed in the paper, the, the Wall Street Journal. They were so blown away by his success with these complete beginners. And he actually called this group of 14 people the turtles. And it's incredible how well they actually did. So what are the four keys that he taught them that we also use? Well, he said, good traders don't try to predict what the market might do. Instead, they look at what the market is actually doing. I say, trade what you see, not what you think. You don't want to predict or to use a crystal ball to try and work out what's going to happen next. What you want to do is trade what's in front of you. Follow the rules. The second key in order to be successful in trading is to think in terms of probabilities. The risk to reward must be heavily in your favour. The reward, in other words, the income you get, must far outweigh the risk that you're taking to achieve that reward. To put it simply, if your risk is a dollar, so in other words, if the trade doesn't work out according to plan, you lose a dollar and your profit is $5, five to one, five dollars if you're right and you lose one dollar if you're wrong. Now, in that scenario, you can actually be wrong four times out of five and you're still going to make money. So think about this. You have a losing trade, you lose a dollar. You have another losing trade, you've now lost two dollars. Four losing trades in a row you've lost $4. You have one winning trade and you make five. Uh -huh. This is what the professionals do. They don't have a secret source. They understand this key better than anyone and how to do it as an automated process, set and forget. So this is the key, being wrong four out of five times and still make money. I'm going to show you how you do that in a moment. Key number three that Richard Dennis taught his turtle traders, remember the 14 traders that went from zero to 175 million, is avoid worrying about an individual trade. It's not about one trade, it's about the process. And this process I'm about to show you is something we've been doing for more than two decades. 
thousands of results and successful members. Now it's your turn to find your missing key to your financial success. What we want to do and what Richard Dennis was talking about was to focus on the process and the results will come. Focus on the process, not the results. Results will come. It's not about one trade. It's about following the process over a longer period of time. Key number four is risk and money management. You have to be able to manage the risk. And let's face it, there's risk in everything we do in life. We have to be able to manage the risk. In other words, cut your losses small and let your winners run, making the winning trades a much higher value than the losing trades. Now, these types of things you need to understand, and none of it's difficult. Okay, Nothing about these four keys is difficult at all. Trade what's in front of you, making sure you make more money on your winning trades than you lose on your losing trades. Simply understanding you need to keep your losses small and allow your winners to make you more money. And you do this through an automated process. That's a beautiful thing about this. You don't have to spend a lot of time doing this. So let's look at the smart income strategy. And it's very similar to what Richard Dennis did with those 14 people, the turtles. I want to show you one of our members that did this in just six days and then went on to make a lot of money since then. So this is the first six days. One of our members started with $4,466 in his account. So that's what he started with. Two days after that, he grew that into $21,000 following our simple rules and strategy. And then another four days later, grew that $21,000 into $62,000. So $4,000 into $62,000 in six days. Okay. following the strategy that I'm about to teach you right now. And this is while the market was going down. So you can make money when the market goes up just as easily as when it goes down. In fact, going down is probably even easier. Some really powerful stuff. So let me introduce you to the smart income strategy where we generate consistent income from the market regardless of whether it's going up or down. What we're talking about here is options. This is the investment vehicle we use. It's not new. In fact, options have been around for five decades. And they've been used by some of the most elite top-level traders in the world for many decades. Warren Buffett, considered one of the best traders of all time, has generated billions of dollars through the use of options. He uses them regularly to protect and generate wealth for himself and his clients. And he says risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. So we're going to understand what we're doing, and we're going to do that right now. There's two types of options. There's a call option and there's a put option. They're the only two options that exist. So I'm about to give you the formula for success, simple rules and the formula. Let's go through the basics first because you can't be good at anything unless you understand the basics. Write this down. There's two types of options. There's a call option and there's a put option. We're not going to buy shares. We're not interested in buying stock. We want to control. So one option controls 100 shares. Well, what's the advantage of that, Anthony? Well, one option is much cheaper than spending a huge amount of money buying 100 shares. Certain shares are very expensive, and it can be a very expensive process. We use far less money. We risk a lot less money here with options. So we're risking a small amount of money and controlling 100 shares as opposed to just going out and buying the 100 shares. So from the very outset, we reduce our risk. Okay, there's call options. We use them when the stock is moving higher. Put options, we use them when the stock is moving lower. So we can make money regardless of if a stock is going up or going down. Now, an option gives you the right. It gives you a right. Regardless of whether it's a call option or a put option, you've got a right a right to do something. The call option gives you the right to buy stock at a particular price. And a put option gives you the right to sell stock at a particular price. So they both give me a right. Call option gives me the right to buy stock. Put option gives me the right to sell stock. So let me explain this through an, through an example. As we just said, a call option gives you the right to buy stock. All options have a dollar amount in front of them. The dollar amount is where your light rise. So if we have a look here, you have a $10 call option, which means your right is to buy stock at $10. Now, if the stock moves higher to $15, your right to buy stock at a price of $10 is obviously worth more. 
Why? Because you can buy it at $10 and everyone else has to pay $15. So you can buy it at a cheaper price than everyone else. So your right increases in value as the stock goes up. Uh -huh. Now I'm starting to get this. The only other type of option that there is is a put option. And that gives you a right too. In this case, your right is to sell a stock using your put option. So if you buy a $10 put option, that gives you the right to sell stock at $10. Now, if the stock moves lower to $5, your right to sell the stock at a higher price of $10 is worth more. Why? Because you can buy, sorry, you can sell the stock at $10 and everyone else has to sell it for five. Is your right more valuable? You better believe it is. People will pay a lot of money for that. This is how you derive your income. You selling your right when it's gone up in value. And it's very simple to do. So let's look at some examples. This is what we recently did. Four option trades. We invested a total of 525 US dollars, which created an income of $3,336 for the week. So one of the trades was NVIDIA buying call options, 114% return. How do we do that? Well, the call option went up. Our right to buy stock more cheaply than everyone else went up in value. Here's another one we bought call options, making an 81% return in a week. MicroStrategy, we bought call options and made over 3,000 in a week, and some of our members are actually still making money out of this trade. It is up thousands. Another call option here on an oil stock, 71% return in a week. So we invested $525. Now, to be clear, we got our $525 back, and in addition to that, we made another $3,336 in income in a week. Now, that's life-changing money. Imagine how that would impact your financial situation right now. What would that do for you weekly? Now, it's all well and good to know about these things, but my question would always be, well, that's fantastic for you, Anthony, but how do I find these things? What I do is I follow two simple rules. Here we go. So the simple rules for success, buy a call option when the two blue lines have crossed above the red line. Buy a put option when the two blue lines have crossed below the red line. Follow the rules, keep it simple, just like the turtles. So this is what it looks like. Now, don't look at this and say, oh my God, this is so confusing. Don't let your brain do that. What I'm going to do is show you exactly how this works. There's massive amounts of money here. You control your thoughts, not your brain controlling you. So stick with me and I'll show you the massive income opportunities available with call options and put options right here. So let's start from the basics. Call option. How do we know when to start? What's the entry? In other words, when do we begin? Well, let's go back to the rules. For a call option, two blue lines cross above the red lines. So in the boxes here, you can see on the right-hand side, you can see these boxes. You can see the blue line crossing above the red line. Okay, that's one. We need two. So the other chart, you can see the blue line crossing above the red line. So therefore, we go and buy a call option. Oh, I like that, Anthony. That's simple. Exactly. The blue line above the red line on the bottom chart, blue line above the red line on the top chart. Okay, good. Go and buy a call option. Okay, so once I bought the call option, how do I know when to close it and take my profits? I want the income. I want to go and buy things with it. So in this case, when just one blue line crosses below the red line, as you can see there on the right, blue line crosses below the red line, we go and close the trade. Okay, that's all there is to it. Take your income, go and spend it, do what you want. Now, in this case, the stock went from $95 to $135, made a fortune buying call options here. Here's another one. Let's go through the process again because repetition is the mother of all skills. So you can see here the blue lines are crossed above the red line. So we've got the bottom chart, blue line above the red. The top chart, blue line above the red. Okay, great. Go and buy a call option. When do we close the trade? When you see one blue line crossing below the red line, go and close the trade. I've got to get out. Take my money. 
The stock actually here went from $140 to $220 in a month. Huge amounts of money being made with call options. Let me show you another one. Has the blue line crossed above the red line on the bottom chart? Yes. Has it crossed above the red line on the top chart? Yes. Go ahead and buy a call. Okay. Remember, we need two, not just one, but two. How do I know when to take my profit? When one blue line crosses below the red line, close the trade, money comes into my account, so I can go and spend it. Okay, that's it. The stock went from $180 to $300. Now, that actually generated $4,565 in income for the month, which is a 94% return on your money. Where are you going to get that? Okay, that's a great return. And you can literally do these every week. Now, on this move right here, when you're looking at these blue and red lines, they mean money. Okay, they mean money. Blue line crossing above the red, blue line crossing above the red, go and buy a call. Okay, when we get one blue line crossing below the red, close the trade. Sounds great. I like the simplicity of that. $4,565 in income from the month, and that's just one trade. Okay. You could have two or three of these going for yourself at the same time, automated without me having to be there to watch them. It's a game changer. Right? So let's look at the whole process and let's do it together with a real option trade. Option income the smart way, better returns, less risk. Follow the rules to success. We've been doing this for decades. Don't try and figure it out for yourself. Let us show you how to generate consistent option income. So let's have a look at NVIDIA making money with call options. How do you make money with a call option? I need two blue lines to cross above the red line. So here's one on the bottom chart. Here's the other one on the top chart. Go ahead and buy a call. And that's exactly what we did with this real life example. Not a made up one, not theory, what we actually did. So we bought this call option for $910. Now, you don't always have to spend that much. That's just what we did with this real-life example. Sometimes the trades are $50, $60, $30, $100. You don't have to spend a lot of money doing this. In this case, though, it was $910. Trade your plan, not your emotions. So what we did is we bought the call option. Why? Because the two blue lines crossed above the red lines. How do I know when to close the trade, take my profit, and go and spend it? Again, when one of the blue lines crosses below the red line, just here, go and close the trade. So what was the result of this real-life trade? Well, $910 turned into $3,640. So if we take the $3,640, take away what we initially spent on the trade, that leaves us with clear profit of $2,730. So you can go and spend it, pay bills, go on a holiday, do whatever you want. That's yours. Okay, pretty incredible. On one trade, a 300% return in less than a month. That's USD, 2730 into your bank account. What about if we could make this even easier? Once you follow the rules, blue line above the red line on the top one, blue line above the red line on the bottom one, pretty easy, right? Just follow the rules. Can we make it automated? Because I don't want to watch it. I don't want to follow anything. I just want it to monitor itself. Once it gets to my profit target, I want it to close out. I just want to make money. And if it goes the wrong way, I want it to close out for only a small loss. Can that be done? You better believe it. You can use something called a bracket order, which is a set and forget auto trade. And this is how you can have two or three of these going every month, generating income for you and your family. Think of it as a one, two, three. Number one is buying your option. Number two is your income. Number three is making sure you don't ever have a big loss. So number one, buy the option. Number two is your income. And number three, making sure you're only ever going to have a small loss and you don't even need to be there. It does it all by itself. So let's work through this NVIDIA trade. Now, the option I'm buying, $910. That's number one. Number two is the profit taker. 2730 Automatically put that into my account for me, and I didn't even need to be there. Didn't have to do anything. Number three is a stop loss. So you can determine how much risk you want to take. Now, I didn't want to risk $910. I only wanted to risk 360 So you can actually set up the trade so that that's all you'll lose. I love the sound of this. So I could buy the option when the two simple rules tell me to do so, set my profit, my income, 
and how much I want to risk, all done in one place. Then go about my normal day and not have to watch it. Yeah, exactly. That's great, right? I like to set my profit taker at three times what I spend on the trade. So in other words, $910 was the cost of the trade. Three times that, $2,730. And it closed out automatically, put the money into my account for me. Now, that's a good deal in less than a month. So $2,730 locked away in my account, 300% return, and it was an automated set and forget process. And again, just to make it crystal clear, I got the 910 back that I spent on the trade originally, plus another 2730 Wow, right? You've, you've got to love that. Now, if you follow this process and have all of your trades set as three to one, think about this. What if you are not really that good at this and you were wrong more than you were right? In other words, you had more losing trades than winning trades. Hold on a minute. How can I make money if I'm wrong more than I'm right? Remember I told you about the keys at the beginning. If you understand asymmetrical risk, you can make phenomenal amounts of money, even if you're wrong more than you're right. So let's say you're only right 40% of the time and wrong 60%. So using the NVIDIA trade, let's say we did 100 trades, 60 losers, 40 winners. The reward, 2,730. The risk using a stop loss, 360. Okay, so your total winners, 40 of them, that amounts to 109,200. 60 losers at 360 is 21,600. So your total profit's $87,600. So even if you're only right 40% of the time, using the automated system that we'll teach you, you can still make incredible money. Now imagine if you're right 60 or 70% of the time. This number would be significantly higher and that's typically what we do, about 7 out of 10. So you can see how much better that result would be using the strategy that I'm showing you. I just wanted to show you a worst case scenario, but imagine what you can do when you follow what we do. So what I've showed you so far is monthly income, how to generate weekly and monthly income. Now, I love that. Generating that cash flow, it's simple, automated, set and forget, and can replace your job income uh, in a reasonably short amount of time. Now, in addition to that, what I want to do is show you how to have a slightly longer term part of your account that grows as well. Something can grow 100x, 100 times in the next 12 months. Something that can grow 20, 50, 100x in 12 months or less. So what we're doing is risking a small amount of money to make a lot, and this is very powerful. I love setting these up for around 12 months' time. Imagine turning 1,000 into 100,000, 2,000 into 200,000. That's what 100x means. Okay, so we did this on a stock called MicroStrategy. We set up the trade here where this first circle is. Oh, 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 what's happening here? Sorry, guys, slides went crazy. Okay, oops. Right, sorry about that. Don't know what happened there. Okay, anyway, so we set up the trade right here where this first circle is and then closed it here in the second circle 20 days later. All right Now, what actually happened on this trade is we put $2,240 into the trade and it turned into $198,700. Okay, so here's the actual trade here. That's a huge return in just 20 days. Okay, now we set this to be a year, but it did such a good move in a short term. I mean, that's a massive amount of percentage return in 20 days. So what I want to do is show you how to do a combination of monthly investing to start generating weekly and monthly income, and then in the background, have two of these very powerful 100x strategies making you a lot of money over a 12-month period. A combination of the two is where you go to another level of income. So let's look at some amazing success stories. What I'm showing you here is monthly income, having two or three of these going at the same time. Now, sometimes they'll actually work themselves out in a day or a week, or in this case, 28 minutes. Set and forget process, $2,432 by simply buying a put option. Another of our members, Thomas, over $6,000 in a month. Following the simple set and forget strategy, a call option making over $100,000 in income. Now, here's an email from a lady, Jan. Okay, she joined the program recently. This is from a few weeks ago. She had never, ever traded before. 
didn't really know anything about it, uh, jumped into the program and found a trade. Okay, so she actually made $263 from a first ever live trade. Never traded before. And as she says in the email, she got into the trade a little bit late, was a little bit nervous, got out a little bit early. Since then, Jan has gone on to make a lot of money. Okay, that's a fantastic thing. And that's why this strategy works so well. No complex stuff. Here's a trade we did recently on McDonald's. Now, this trade reached its profit target, which was 148% or $593 per contract. Automated set and forget income. Now, you'd have to admit that owning gold right now is a very smart move. But here's the problem, right? Not everyone has the availability of cash to go and do so. Why not trade options on gold and then use that profit to go and buy the, the physical gold? So what we did here is you can see blue line crossing above the red line, blue line crossing above the red line, went and bought a call option. And so we ended the trade on the 16th of March for a cost of $2.21. Okay, exited the trade at $8.62 on April 18. That's a $641 profit per contract or a 290% return in a month. Do you think that you could do a couple of these, create enough cash from doing so, and then go and buy the physical gold with your cash from trading? Here's one on silver, another precious metal. 21st of March, we ended the trade for $1.07. Why did we get into the trade? Blue line crossing above the red line here, blue line crossing above the red line here, go and buy a call option. Okay, Here's one of our members that actually did this. This is his particular trade on silver, his second live trade ever. Okay, So ended on the 21st, like I said, cost was $1.07. Closed the trade on Tuesday, the 4th of April. So went from $1.07 to $3.00. That's $193 profit per contract or 180% return in 14 days. Now, the trade did go on a little bit further and he could have stayed in a little bit longer, but it's his second live trade. Did he learn from that? Has he made some massive changes and uh, profit income since then? Absolutely, he has. Because you can see here on the 12th of April, it's still saying, hold your trade. That's the beautiful thing about this. Now, by following the smart income strategy, following the rules, following the keys to success, making it automated, making sure the reward is much higher than the risk, keeping it simple, you can make phenomenal living by doing this, just like the turtles. So let me show you how this works and how it will work for anyone. The smart income strategy. You're going to receive step-by-step -step instructions on how to implement this strategy right now. The great thing with the smart income strategy is that you'll be able to generate consistent returns whether the market is moving up or moving down. Lifetime access to our smart income strategy. Our step-by-step -step video modules will guide you through how to successfully and profitably trade options while managing your risk effectively. All modules can be watched at your own pace in the comfort of your own home. And thanks to our comprehensive program, you'll be able to go from com complete beginner to mastering the art of options trading from anywhere in the world. It is something that beginners can easily learn. So what am I going to learn here, Anthony? Well, module one is finding how, these, how, to, how to find these opportunities for yourself, knowing how to find them for the rest of your life. You'll be able to find them every month. Module two, you need to know when to enter a trade. Those blue and red lines have taken us decades to perfect. We'll show you the exact setups, exactly how it works, all done in your account. You'll know what the blue and red lines are and exactly when to buy a call or exactly when to buy a put. We'll show you all of this. You'll love it. It's very simple to follow. Call option income, put option income, knowing what option to buy, we will show you all of it. We'll show you how to make all of this automated, how that one, two, three process works. How can I make this automated so I don't have to be watching these trades, allowing to get on with my life, doing all the things that I love to do? Okay, we'll teach you the 100x strategy. We'll find the trades, how to set them up, the whole process all laid out for you. And you'll get all six of these for life. Importantly, we're going to show you the exact option to buy. Now, this is something we've perfected over decades, the 1% rule to choosing the right option, knowing which option to buy, knowing how much time you need, all of those types of things, how much the stock has to go up in value for you to make money.
Very simple rules to follow, but it's a secret trading formula that once you have it, you'll have it for life. Step-by-step -step instructional videos to set up your account quickly and easily and avoid making mistakes and start making fast. Okay, you'll be able to follow along and get your account set up quickly. We'll support you in your learning. Ask questions about the things you don't understand. Now, I'm going to give you something special, in fact, very special today. Everything you've seen so far, $5,500 in value. Now, I'm only going to charge you $1,997 for a lifetime of income, the 100x strategy that can make you generational wealth. Now, that's a fantastic deal, but stick with me because I haven't finished yet. The future depends on what you do today not what you do tomorrow, so the decision you make today will determine where you end up financially in two or three years from now. And let's face it, two or three years is coming whether you like it or not. How are you going to end up there financially? That's the key. The decision you make now is going to have a direct impact on where you'll end up. Don't miss this life-changing opportunity. Excuses will always be there, but opportunities won't. Now, there's a lot of people in this webinar right now I'm just looking for 20 dedicated action takers to take this life-changing opportunity right now. And I'm going to show you how you can make more money more rapidly than you've ever thought possible. I'm actually going to give you two incredible gifts to make explosive profits fast. The first gift I'm going to give you is the 100x strategy. Not only the strategy, but I'm going to find the trades for you. That's right. Two trades that over the next 12 months could 100x. What does that mean? 1,000 turns into 100,000, 2,000 into 200,000. These are some of the best opportunities that we've seen in the last 20 years. Take a small amount of money, grow it into an incredibly large amount of money over a 12-month period. I'm going to give you those two and set them all up for you. You'll love that. Also, automated set and forget trading. I want to show you how it all works. They're actually going to set up two trades for you. All you do is simply copy what I do. Those two trades, I'm going to show you the whole process, how it works, how I found the investment, the whole thing set up for you, so you can start making money quickly. All aspects will be set up as set and forget. So you're going to get two 100x trades that you can put into your account growing over a 12-month period and potentially 100x your money. And also two monthly trades to get you set up right now, fully automated, start making money while you're learning. Four powerful trades, two over 12 months, and two to 100x your money and make income fast. That's a great deal, right? Now, over the next month or so, I'm going to actually invite you to a two-day workshop. We're going to bring all of this together for you in a big way. It'll change your financial future. Now, everything you've, you've seen so far is all about action takers. That's what we're all about. Okay, so if you're still listening to this webinar right now, and if you make full payment today, I'll reduce the cost by $1,000. Okay, now if your focus can follow a process, then you're going to be successful here. So not $6,500, only $997. So guys, click on this link. The link is in the chat. Click on that link. It'll take you straight to the payment page to become a brand new member. I'm going to also give you a 14-day money-back guarantee. We'll take all the risk. Click on the link. Let's get you started. At 997, this is a gift. Incredible value for what you're paying here. The four trades I'm giving you will make 10 times this or more. Grab this opportunity. It's a lifetime of income that you need. Now, if you want to pay by bank deposit, there's the banking details. I'll come back to that in a little bit. Okay, if you have any problems at all making payment, send us an email at billing at Meta Wealth Professional Trading. So click on the link, grab one of those 20 places, and let's show you how to make income for life. Set and forget, simple rules, this is the key. Okay, so here's the banking details. If you want to send a, a bank payment, take a screenshot of that and then send us through the bank payment. And if you can please send us your remittance to the billing email address. It's in the chat there. Uh, now, does anyone have any questions? Is it a get-rich-quick scheme? No, it requires a little bit of work. Can you make a lot of money from this fairly quickly? Absolutely. 
Okay, this is not, I don't think there's ever really a get rich quick scheme that works. Uh, this is certainly not one of them. Uh, why? Oh, Frederick, I love that question. If you're making 100x, why are you selling programs? It's an interesting question. And uh, thanks for asking. What most people aspire to in their life is to become financially independent. What most people don't think of is what comes next. Because when you know how to generate income and you don't need to work, the idea of sitting on a beach drinking pina coladas is kind of really appealing. But I've got to tell you, after a week, it gets very, very boring. After that, you, you need to do something. And there's, there's no better fulfillment for you personally in life than being able to share what you know with others and have a positive impact on their life financially. So, yeah, that's, that's the reason. That's the very reason. Does the software work with any account? Mike, yes. As long as you've got an internet connection, this works. How much time do you spend each week, Fritz? Um, I, I probably spend about an hour or two. That's it. Not a lot of time. Once you know how the strategy works, it's pretty quick and easy to go and find trades, set them up, and um, again, they're, they're set and forget. Uh, Kevin, no, you don't have to buy stock to be able to do the options. You can buy options against stock. Can I use it with a Fidel, uh, Fidelity Roth IRA? Uh, you can. Yeah, I believe you can actually set up an account with interactive brokers through your IRA, and then you would be able to do that. Uh, who is the company in Dubai? Yeah, that's Meta Wealth Professional Training. So, guys, I've been living abroad for more than five years. Uh, so, therefore, I decided to set myself up in Dubai simply because the banking uh, situation over there and the structures they have, the financial system, it's amazing. So, that's the reason for Dubai. Uh, how do you determine a stop loss? It's all based on how much you pay for the trade. I generally look for around about 50% of the trade cost is where I would have my stop loss. That's an approximate level somewhere there. That's a good line in the sand. Uh, you can pay with credit card. Absolutely, Jeff. All you do is go to that link that we'll put in the chat for you, metawealthprofessionaltraining.com forward slash special, and that will allow you to do a credit card payment. Uh, that's a great question. You've showed us sorry, you've showed us successful trade examples. What's your success rate overall? About seven out of ten. Okay, about seven out of ten. And this payment, guys, is for a lifetime. You get all of those modules, all of everything there for life. Okay, so that is yours forever. The two-day workshop will be online. What's the money-back guarantee again? Money-back guarantee is 14 days. I'll take all the risk. All you need to do is get in there, have a good look at it, have a good try. And if it's really not for you, I'm happy to give you money back. Okay, so there's all the details again. Guys, any other quality questions? Let me know what you have there. Uh, can you do it in any market? Yes, absolutely, you can. You certainly can. Uh, now, here's a good one. Guys, when you go to the registration page, we've actually got in there extra security for you. It's called 3D security. We don't accept payments unless you can actually verify the payment with your bank. So this is actually extra security for you. And what will happen is your bank will send you a text message once you've done the payment, which you then need to confirm. Now, if you don't have that set up with your bank, that might be a little bit of a problem. But more and more banks are now introducing the security into their payment processing. So if you've already got this set up, that's great. Most people do. If you have any problems at all with the payment, then just send us an email at the billing email address and we can help you out. Or you can put your email and your phone number and name into the chat. It's only us that can see it. No one else can see it. Then uh, we can contact you later and help you with that. Average trade cost, uh, Bruce, probably about anywhere between 30 and and $100. And not add it to the cart because it says it's already in there, but the cart says it's empty. Yeah, Dan, if you're going to send an email to billing at cash flow options, 
sorry, at billing at mentalwealthprofessionaltraining.com. We can help you out with that for sure. What's the duration for an option? Uh, Stephanie, that's something that you can select. We would normally look at buying an option that expires in, say, 30 days, uh, unless it's a 100x strategy. Of course, that would be a much longer term. Thanks, Jeff. We'll, we'll reach out for you. Uh, dear people who are tight on money to the point we can't spend large amounts of money to get in. Dakota, that's exactly why I've set this program up like this, to keep it simple, easy to follow, easy to learn, and it's not going to cost you a fortune to start. That's a good thing about it. Uh, all right, guys, any other questions? How long is the offer available for? Uh, it's generally 1997, guys. I'll keep it open for you for the next couple of hours. Uh, what you can do is if you need an extra time, just send us an email and we can, uh, we can help you out with, that, out with that for sure. Uh, does buying cover on TD Ameritrade mean the same as buying a call? Uh, not really, no. That would be buying stock and then selling a call, which is slightly different. Joshua, no, none of these strategies include naked calls. No, we're not selling naked options. How big of trades can you make without moving the market? Oh, there's, uh, there's so much volume in the market that even if all of us collectively did the same thing at exactly the same time, it's not going to impact the market. Do you trade on margin? You don't have to. You can do this all on cash. Yep, don't need a margin account. Any fees attached to the trade? Yeah, with your brokerage, your brokerage will charge you a small fee. Uh, that's the case in every situation. You can find brokerage companies that will not charge you a fee. However, what ends up happening is you end up paying more in your trade uh, because nothing's for free, right? So, yeah, you pay a small fee when you, when you do trade. Uh, yeah, please send us an email about that one and we can, uh, we can help you out with that one. They suit. I hope I pronounced that correctly. All right, guys. Well, if there's any other questions, please send an email through to that billing address and we can help you out close enough. Oh, good. My apologies for not getting it right. Um, all right. Guys, thanks for putting your details in the chat. We will certainly help you out from there. Anything else you need to know, please let us know and i um, happy to help out. Guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for your time today. Look forward to catching up with you soon and welcome to everybody who is joining us in the program. Take care, guys. All the very best and bye for now.